All right, so this was not the end of our story because carbonate is a weak base. It will react with water to form bicarbonate, HCO3. The chemical reaction would be a typical acid-base reaction where our weak base carbonate will take a proton from water in an equilibrium fashion. Carbonate is a weak base, so this is not an irreversible reaction. It is an equilibrium reaction, and it will form bicarbonate, HCO3-, the conjugate acid of carbonate, and hydroxide, OH-. We can write an equilibrium constant for this reaction, and since this is a chemical reaction that describes the reaction of a weak base with water, this is a special type of equilibrium constant expression, one designed to measure the strength of a base, which is known as the Kb. If you haven't dealt with Kbs for a little while, once again, I've placed a link to our video review of Ka's for acids and Kb for bases on the page following this lecture, so I'd recommend you check it out. If we write the equilibrium constant for this reaction, the equilibrium constant Kb is the concentration of bicarbonate times the concentration of hydroxide divided by the concentration of carbonate. Products in the top, reactants on the bottom, everyone to their stoichiometric coefficients. Water doesn't appear in this because it's a pure liquid and it's the solid for the system. You can look up the Kb value for this reaction in your textbook or in another resource. And in your textbook, this Kb value is given in table 10.3. There is a more exhaustive list of Kbs, Ka's, and Ksp values at room temperature in the appendix of your textbook. Another way to reflect our problem is a tool we'll learn to use on Monday known as the mass balance expression. A mass balance expression is an algebraic statement that relates the stoichiometry of one product in a chemical reaction to another. So we can use an algebraic expression that says, if carbonate goes on to react with water like this to make bicarbonate, one thing that's gonna be true about our system, and this is our fundamental problem in terms of figuring out how soluble the coral's exoskeleton is, is that the concentration of calcium is gonna be equal to the concentration of carbonate plus the concentration of any bicarbonate that results from this reaction. And we can say that because we know originally in the solubility breakdown of calcium carbonate, the calcium carbonate produced one mole of calcium for every mole of carbonate. But some of this carbonate goes on to react further and make bicarbonate while the calcium does not. So in terms of the increasing complexity of our system, because carbonate is a weak base, we have to now consider the fact that the calcium and the carbonate concentrations will not be equal in the seawater because some of the carbonate reacts with water to make bicarbonate. And so at any time, if these are the only two equilibrium reactions that we are concerned with, we can now say that the calcium concentration is equal to the carbonate concentration plus the bicarbonate concentration. So in, now what we want to figure out is, if we have to consider this equilibrium as well, what will the dissolved calcium concentration be? Because that tells us something about how soluble our poor corals' exoskeletons are in this more acidic ocean that we're making. So our to total system now looks like not just the first equilibrium reaction, calcium carbonate solid reacts equilibrium style to give us calcium 2 plus and carbonate, Ksp equal to 4.6 times 10 to the negative ninth at 25 degrees Celsius, but also we have a second reaction. Carbonate goes on to react with water to make bicarbonate, HCO3 minus, and hydroxide, OH minus. Kb for this reaction is 2.1 times 10 to the negative fourth. If we consider these two equili equilibria together, this will give us a better idea under typical water conditions, how soluble our coral's exoskeleton is going to be in the water. Because now we not only consider the initial solubility of the calcium carbonate, but we also consider how this second equilibrium will drop the carbonate concentration, which will shift the system to the right in accordance with Le Chatelier's principle, liberating more calcium 2 plus 
and more carbonate, CO3 two minus. So at our second pass, in terms of understanding how soluble the calcium carbonate is going to be, is we are going to put these two equilibrium reactions together and come up with a single equilibrium reaction that describes the solubility of the coral exoskeleton. So in this case, calcium carbonate solid goes to calcium 2 plus plus carbonate, CO3 2 minus, can be combined with carbonate, reacts with water to form bicarbonate and hydroxide. We can put these two reactions together. When you're combining reactions, remember everything on the reactant side of the arrows adds up. Everything on the product side of the arrows adds up. And anything that appears on both sides cancels out. So if we're making carbonate in this step, but we're using up carbonate in this step, and we have the same number of moles of each, the moles of carbonate cancel out, and our overall balanced chemical equation looks like this. Calcium carbonate solid plus water goes to calcium 2 plus plus bicarbonate, HCO3 minus, plus hydroxide, OH minus. Now, for this to be useful for us as an equilibrium reaction, we need to know what the equilibrium constant for this reaction is. If you remember back to Wednesday, we talked about how what we do with the values of equilibrium constants if we add them together, if we add two reactions together to describe a more complex equilibrium. And if you add these two reactions together, you have to multiply the equilibrium constants to figure out your new equilibrium constant. So if I add this and this, I have to multiply the Ksp times the Kb to get the new K expression, to get the new value of K at room temperature for the overall reaction. If I multiply the Ksp times the Kb, 4.16 times 10 to the negative ninth, times 2.14 times 10 to the negative fourth, gives me an overall equilibrium constant of 9.7 times 10 to the negative 13th. And so now, if I want a better approximation of what the calcium concentration is going to be at equilibrium in this system, or how soluble our coral exoskeleton is going to be, I can solve this K expression, and I'll get a better picture because this considers the behavior of carbonate as a base. So now all I need to do is define what the K expression for this overall equilibrium constant looks like, and then I can solve for the calcium concentration to better understand how soluble my coral is going to be. Again, products over reactants. Water doesn't appear, though, because that's pure liquid. Calcium carbonate doesn't appear in the K expression because that's pure solid. So my K expression is calcium concentration times bicarbonate concentration times hydroxide concentration is equal to the value of the K, 9.7 times 10 to the negative 13th which is equal to x cubed. If we draw an ice table for this, like I've done in the handout below this video, showing you the full work, the initial concentration of all these species would be zero, the change in the concentration of each of these species would be x, and the equilibrium concentrations of each of them are x, so the k is equal to x cubed. I can therefore solve for x, the calcium concentration, by taking the cubed root of the k value 9.7 times 10 to the negative 13th. So calcium concentration is equal to the cubed root 9.7 times 10 to the negative 13th, giving us an equilibrium calcium concentration 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative 5th to 2 sig figs. Why do we care about that calcium concentration? Because that's a better approximation of how soluble our coral would be in ocean water. And notice if you compare this value to the first value that we've generated, the solubility of the coral has gone up by almost 50%. It's 145% more soluble if we remember that the base behavior of carbonate is going to impact how soluble the calcium carbonate is through Le Chatelier's principle. So what we've done so far today is we've taken a look at how a second wrinkle, a second equilibrium, impacts the position of the equilibrium that describes our coral's exoskeleton solubility. But as yet, we haven't considered the impact of how carbon dioxide making ocean water more acidic 
is going to impact the solubility of our coral. And that's going to be our main goal on Monday. We're going to show you how we do more of this multi-equilibrium system thinking to actually be able to include the fact that the CO2 concentration is going up. And we're going to take a look at how that impacts the coral's exoskeleton solubility. So I'll see you back here on Monday for that. Don't forget we have our usual self-assessment to end the week, and I will be live on Zoom from 10 to 11 on Friday to talk with you a little bit about the application of some of this PE expression and diagram and some of the equilibrium chemistry that we've been talking about. I expect you have some questions because some of this stuff is getting a little complex, and I'd be happy to talk through any of it and all of it with you. See you then, and enjoy your weekend.